Now we talk about a simple scenario that is linear subvector machines as well as the data set. It is linearly separable case. So that means we must have a subvector machine which can give us low misclassification result. Okay, and let's look into details about the linear linear subvector machine with linearly separable data set. And now that is this is the problem we are dealing with. We are going to have a data set that is linearly separable and then the classification problem that is two classes, something like this in this figure we have met before. Yeah. So plus one and then minus one we have a function x hyperplane which can separate these two classes 100% correctly yeah so this is the hyperplane now we have a clearer idea what this hyperplane looks like that is a linear subtraction machine we will just find out that it involves the coordinate that is the samples x that is according to what we have defined that is x is a vector so for this figure x is a two-dimensional case we have x1 x2 when i talk about x1 x2 they are these two elements yeah so when we talk about both face x1 x2 it is in this format yeah the both face it means that it is vector italic x1 x2 it means that it is a scalar just one value in one dimension yeah okay and now the hyperplane that is in a hyper dimensional space assume that we have the dimensional space that is x we have x1 x2 up to xd yeah d dimensions so in that case we are going to define the hyperplane right here that is w transpose x plus w naught w naught that is a scalar scalar it means that it has only one element for example this one that is two and then w that is in this form because x is a d-dimensional vector so we will have w1 w2 up to wd when we have the transpose right here it becomes w1 up to wd yeah and then x that is x1 x2 up to xd so w transpose times x it becomes a scalar yeah it becomes a scalar for example a value that is a so when we talk about this particular case so fx will be w transpose x plus w naught now w that is we only have two elements because the number of the number of input that is x1 and x2 in two dimensional space so we have w1 w2 and then x that is right here so multiply them out w1 w2 this is the transpose and then times x1 x2 plus w naught it will become w1 x1 plus w2 x2 plus w naught so in total we have three variables to de to determine the first unknown is w1 the second unknown that is w2 the third unknown that is w0 once we find these w's and then so we can define where to draw this line where to draw this hyperplane okay now in order to find w and w naught that is these two guys and then so we have to make sure that the margin is optimal in this sense because the first no error happens so in that case we are going to translate this requirement into this two requirements that is this is the hyperplane this is f if for those x belongs to the first class for example class one that means we are going to substitute this pawn into this hyperplane 
which will give us a value that is greater than or equal to one. Okay. And now when we consider minus one, that means if we are going to substitute this value into this x, which will give us a value that is less than or equal to minus one. How to achieve this? That is, we are going to find w and w naught to make sure that these two conditions are satisfied. Okay, now under what condition the equal will happen? That is, when we consider these three points, any one of them, put it into this x, it will give us equals 1. That means only these three points will give us fx equals 1. And then for this three points, support radius, which will give us fx equals minus 1. Uh, y plus 1 minus 1 because we choose the label for this group of samples to be minus 1, these groups of samples to be plus 1. So these three subtractors will give us fx equals 1. All of them, these fx, not lying on the shift type of thing, will give us a value greater than 1. And then for these guys, fx less than minus less than minus one yeah so less than greater than one except these two these three points okay so this is the so this is the way for us to to set up the condition to make sure that low errors and uh, now we are going to talk about the margin is optimized that means the distance right here that is maximized okay now take a look at this one in order to define the margin or find the width of the margin we need to know how to find the distance i just give a very simple example right here assume that this blue line that is the fx that is 2x1 plus 4x2 minus x equals 0 assume that i have a point right here the coordinate that is 1 3 it means that x1 that is 1 x2 right here that is 3 yeah okay so i want to find the distance this is the distance yeah okay and now according to what we learned before i mean uh, in the um in the high school in the end now the distance can be found like this we use this formula fx that is the hyperplane right here. W, that is the W value in the hyperplane. For example, this is the fx w1 x1 plus w2 x2 plus w0. And then w1 w, that is w1 w2. So when we talk about the L2 norm of W, that is W. That is W1 square plus W2 square. That is the definition of the L2 norm of W. And now, take a look at this one. We are going to find this distance and then pack this x1, x2 point into this formula. We come up with this, this result. This is the absolute value of fx. That means when you substitute 1, 3 into this equation so now x1 that is 1 x2 that is 3 substitute it into this equation we will have 2 times x1 4 times x2 minus 6 take the absolute value and then this is the l2 norm of w1 and w2 according to our example this is w1 this is W2, so the distance right here, that is 1.7889. Now, that means given a function f, given any point right here, we can find the perpendicular distance. Okay, and now when we look at this case, assume that we have many samples. This belongs to plus 1, this belongs to minus 1. We give the labels to them. 
and then we are going to define the margin like this as you know the margin that is we are going to shift this f x to the left to the right so that the shifted version touches the samples yeah and then the same for this version touches once it touches the samples and then we stop so this is the the margin to z to now take a look at this one mathematically we can define like this that means to find the margin we are actually if we are going to find all the distance from here to here and then this is this case from here perpendicular to fx we can just simply find all distance right here corresponding to parts one that means for those samples xi where the label belongs to minus one for example this one we just simply find all the distance for these samples one by one and then pick the one give us the minimum distance yeah so this this bit right here that is to find the distance yeah so this is to find the distance using this information here so find the minimum one so according to this figure we know that the shortness distance is given by the support writers so that is any of these three guys will give us the minimum distance for those sample with label belongs to minus one okay so that is z2 so this one will give us z2 the same for this one for those samples belongs to plus one that is all these samples right here and then find the distance one by one by one pick the one give us the minimum distance that is z2 one example that is this one so that is this one give us the shortest distance so z2 plus z2 that is 2z2 that is the margin given by this design fx equal zero yeah okay and now because w we can just simply extract this w and put it outside so we come up with the second line and then so according to our design when we look at this term as well as this term according to our design right here as I mentioned right here, we would like to design W and W naught so that when we substitute the support vectors into the fx, it will give us equal one. Yeah, so that means fx will be one if we are going to substitute the support vectors into this equation, one or minus one, depending on. The label is plus one or minus one so because this is the absolute value so this one will give us minus one this one will give us plus one anyway take the absolute value this one will become one plus one so that's why we have two divided by the l2 norm of w so this is the margin in this figure that is two z two okay so if you are going to, if we are going to consider the margin like this, and then so we can formulate the problem into an optimization problem. That is to maximize this margin by adjusting by choosing the proper value of w. That is w one, w two, as well as w zero. But w zero is not here, and then so actually, it we will set up the condition for w naught as well 